Watching the instruction video will give you a good idea on how the boat is to be built. But the most important thing is to follow the instructions. Always have your instructions with you uh, when you're building. We received our uh, canoe yak frame kit in the mail. Now that we've opened the box, these are all the parts that come in the canoe yak frame kit. This here is a two-man kit. In the one-man kit, there would only be one rib, but all the other parts are the same with the exceptions of the different numbers. Okay, what we have here is we have a front and a rear aluminum part. We have numbers in sequence that will be put uh, on the frame, which will dictate the shape of the frame. And each part has a number. In the instructions, it tells you exactly where that goes. You get all of the screws. You get screws that will uh, put the, screw this to the frame and screws that will put the frame together. So with it here, you have everything you need minus the material list that you will be buying from your local uh, lumber box store. Let's take a look at what this looks like when all of these pieces are put together and it's a frame. Everything you need to build your canoe yak, uh, most people have it around the house. You need two sawhorses, about six hand clamps, you need a good box cutter and a few extra blades, tape, uh, 20, 25 foot tape, pencil and a sharpie uh, felt pen, a caulking gun, you need a drill, and you need a bit that will drill the hole and countersink at the same time. This really makes things a lot easier for you and helps you not to split the wood. Framer square. You need a, just an inexpensive miter box, a pair of scissors and some tape. This is really all that you need to build your canoe yak. A stapler with the, uh, the quarter inch staples also is very helpful. If you have one of those available, not necessary, but it does make it easier. And the last thing, which really makes things easy, is a uh, hot knife. Now, what this will do will help you tremendously to cut the styrofoam where you want to cut it. Uh, these run about 20 bucks and uh, it's a, it's a pretty darn good investment. It's amazing how much it will save you in, in time and make things look a lot better. It's important that you bring the material list with you to your lumber yard. To build the canoe yak, you need the canoe yak frame kit, which runs about $150 post paid to you. You need one one by six by 12 poplar number one poplar cut into six strips you need one four by four ac exterior plywood quarter inch you need four tubes of gorilla heavy duty adhesive one quart of water-based paint one spray can of contact glue adhesive three four by eight sheets of PVC, 16th of an inch thick, and you need two four by eight sheets, three quarter inch thick styrofoam. And this is all you need to build your canoe yak. Everything you need to build your canoe yak, you can buy at your local uh, box hardware store, will run under $200 plus the $150 for the Kanuyak frame kit, under $400, and you have yourself a good boat that will last for years.
we bought a one by six 12 foot long number one poplar out of this we're going to cut uh, three quarter by three quarter 12 foot long strips that will be used for the frame what you have when you're done uh, running all of this through is you'll end up with six strips of wood three quarter by three quarter 12 feet long and this will be what you use for your frame and by doing this this way rather than buying them individually uh, you could save a lot of money this uh, when you buy this board it says that it's 12 feet long but it's actually 12 feet and 3 eighths of an inch and that's good because what you'll do is take a little bit of off of each end so that you've got the uh, ends square and you want to make it exactly 12 feet uh, so you will take that 3 eighths of an inch a little bit off of each end until you end up with 12 feet long and it's important that these are exactly 12 feet long so right now we have six pieces all the exact length we're going to take four of these pieces now and we're going to use these four to uh, to get the length on the the, the frame take uh, one at a time they should be all number one but take it and check and make sure that it bends good and that there's no knots or weak spots anywhere and you'll do this for all six of them and making sure that they'll bow without breaking or snapping or having any any kind of uh, weakness in it so you're just going to take four four of those and do that save these other two for now now you've got the, the four 12 foot pieces that you're going to be using so you want to take a a framer square and make sure that all four of those pieces are exactly lined up and take a piece of tape and then check check to make sure that they are lined up right then you're going to do the same thing on the other end taping it what we have on this is uh, four pieces of wood that are the exact size because all four of them were cut from one one by six this one here is actually two sixteenths past 12 feet so what we're going to do is we're going to just barely take the ends off to make it exactly 12 feet you can see that there's just a very small amount that we want to cut off there but by cutting that off number one you're going to be exactly 12 feet is where you want to be but also it gives you a fresh cut and these two ends it's this end it will meet with the three foot piece that you're going to uh, attach and bring the two together with the uh, angle iron we're just going to be cutting off about a sixteenth of an inch off the end of this uh, this uh, three by th three quarter by three quarter strips so you have to be sure that when you put it in the miter box be sure to put a board that is going to make it level otherwise what will happen is you're going to cut it it's going to be at an angle which you don't want so whatever the distance is here to make it to make it cut square put the same amount of uh, board here to bring it up and what you have now are four pieces the new square cut here and they're all exactly the same 12 feet for the 12 foot boat we have four pieces that are three quarter by three quarter exactly 12 feet what we need next now is we need four pieces of three quarter by three quarter 
that are three feet long. So we're gonna take one of the 12 footers and we're gonna measure down and that will give us the, uh, the little bit extra we need to make sure that we have four pieces that we're gonna to tape together and end up with four three foot, three quarter by three quarter strips. So what we have now is we have four pieces that are close to three feet, not exactly. The fresh cut end is here, so we're gonna take our, our framer square, and we're gonna take it so that these are all exactly the, at the very end, and what we're gonna do then is tape them, tape them together. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure exactly three feet from here to here, use the framer square to make a line, and then we're gonna cut that. And now we have four, three quarter by three quarter, all of them exactly the same size, three feet. At this point, we're going to take our three foot piece and our 12 foot piece, we're gonna marry them together. So you wanna get them so that they're flush with each other. Take one of the angles, and this line, you will put it right on that line, rotate it over, there's a hole here, you'll take a drill bit, drill a hole in it, take one screw, it comes with it in the kit, being sure not to strip this, put it just tight, but don't turn it so much that you're going to strip it because these will be taken apart again. Then when you rotate it over, there'll be another hole here, which you will do again. Then you'll take this one, put it right up, right up against it, turn it over, right up flush and so what you have now is three foot 12 foot and now you have exactly 15 feet and then you'll have four 15 footers we've attached our 12 foot pieces with the three foot pieces and right now we have 15 feet exactly and what we're going to do is we're going to bundle two together and start to uh, put our marks where the um, numbered pieces from the kit are going to go. It's very important that before you start marking and you're going to take these two pieces together, A and B have to be like this. C and D have to be like this. It's very important that these are taped like this. You're going to take, put them like that, and you're going to have A, A, B, B. These two here will be taped together. You'll have C and D. And these then will be all taped together. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your A and B bundle. You're going to make sure that the ends are exactly even. And what we're going to do is just tape these together. And you can do the same thing with your C and D making sure that they're both even and that your C and D are like this and your A and B are like that. You now have two bundles. You have A, B and C, D taped together. And now we'll start measuring 
where your canoe yak parts are going to go that are going to dictate the shape of your frame. Now that A and B bundle and C and D bundle are taped together, starting from the front, you have A front top, B front top, and that's on the AB bundle. The CD bundle, you have C front bottom, D front bottom. The three foot piece should be on in front of you and on your left. Then you'll go back to the end where you'll have on the AB bundle, you have A rear top, B rear top, and the CD bundle, you have C rear bottom, D rear bottom. And at this point, you're going to take the A rear top and you're going to cut one inch off of the back of it. At this point, you're going to take and you're going to measure one inch off of the A rear top. Mark a one inch mark. Take your, your framer square. Using your miter, then you will cut one inch off of the A, B rear top bundle. Our first mark is on the AB front top measurements. We're going to start from front to rear and we're going to measure 41 inches from the end. Make a mark, square it with our uh, framer square and then we're going to put in bold print felt number 7F. Put our mark, 41. Take our framer square, make a line, and do that on each side. And then when you're back to the top, the piece that goes here is number 7F. That's the part number that is going to go there. Once you've done 41, then you'll go to 45 and a half inches, and you'll put number 4F. And you'll do that all the way down till you get to the end on your last measurement, which is 147 and 3 quarters of an inch, where you'll be marking number 8R, and then you'll be finished with the AB front top measurements from front to rear. Then you'll go to CD bottom, and what you'll do is from the front to the rear, you'll make these measurements and mark the part number that goes there, just as you did with the AB, you'll do the same thing with the CD. I measured twice, marked off each one as I did it, and marked each measured number with the part number that will be uh, attached there. Double check your measurements. When you're done, you should have your A front top, B front top, and at each designated measurement, you'll have number of the part that will be attached at that point which will dictate the shape of the frame. Once you've done this to your AB working from the front to the rear, then you should be have all of that uh, all of those marks on. Once you have both bundles measured and marked with the parts that are going to be attached to that point. It's not a bad idea to just lay your tape measure down and just go, uh, go back on your list and check each measurement just to make sure that it is right. And by doing that before you uh, take your bundles apart, you'll find out if there are any mistakes, you'll be able to correct them. Right now, you should be pretty much done with, uh, with your marking. And uh, it's just a good idea to double check those measurements and make sure that you wrote down the right part 
for the right measurement. The next chapter we'll be building this frame and it shouldn't take any more than three hours to assemble and get to this point.